Now on ITV1, Lewis Hamilton's in pole position. It's the opening round of the season as Steve Ryder presents our coverage. We're in Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix. And so it all comes down to this. Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso and Kimi Raikkonen. A season in one day. Three men, 71 laps, a world championship for one of them at the end of it all. This is not just a supreme test of skill, it's a supreme test of nerve as well. This is the decisive moment. It is wide open. It's been such a great season. It is set up perfectly for the final Grand Prix of 2007. Australian Grand Prix that was going to answer so many questions, not least with the excitement and the extraordinary competition we saw at the end of the 2007 season extend into the start of 2008 as Kimi Raikkonen began the defence of a world championship title that he claimed by a single point from the extraordinary Lewis Hamilton. So welcome to our highlights of this Australian Grand Prix, a season that began with significant technical changes. No traction control or engine braking systems for the drivers and greater questions would be asked of the men behind the wheel. And significant driver changes as well. Fernando Alonso returning to the Renault team where he won back-to-back -back world championship titles. Heike Kovalainen joining Lewis Hamilton in what seemed to be a far more cordial partnership at McLaren. But things were unchanged at Ferrari. Felipe Massa still alongside the world champion, Kimi Raikkonen. Well, James Allen and Martin Brundle will describe the story of this Australian Grand Prix, but here's how they lined up on the grid. And so the grid for the Australian Grand Prix, and it's the youngest ever front row. Hamilton and Kubica, just 23 years of age. That's a career best second for Kubica. Same story for Heike Kovalainen in third, who has Felipe Massa alongside him in the Ferrari. Row three, Nick Heidfeld and Jano Trulli in the Toyota. Row four, Nico Rosberg in the Williams and David Coulthard in the Red Bull. Sebastian Vettel in the top ten again. He has Rubens Barrichello alongside him on row five. Outside the top ten, Fernando Alonso, Jensen Button is 12. Nakajima and Weber make up row seven. Reigning world champion Raikkonen had a fuel pump problem. He's 15. Fissi Keller alongside him in 16. Frenchman Sebastian Bourdais and Adrian Sutil make up row nine. Glock and Sato make up row 10. At the back of the grid, PK, who qualifies exactly where his dad did for his first Grand Prix, and Anthony Davidson. One of the key regulation changes for 2008 is the loss of traction control. And on the start line, it will have a significant effect. Now the drivers must control and modulate the wheel spin. The difference between an ordinary start and a great start could be as much as 50 metres this year. And we're going to see a lot more movement on the grid and down to the first corner. Last year, when we saw Lewis Hamilton excelling into the first corner of his first Grand Prix, it was then a bit of a software engineer's race down to that first corner and breaking point. But there's still a great opportunity to make up places, if you're brave, that is. Your front tyres are cold, your brakes are not up to full operating temperature. It's hero and zero stuff. Get it right, you look fantastic. Get it wrong, lose a wheel, lose the front wing, or cause the race to be stopped. This year, no rushing back for a spare car. They're not available anymore. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Albert Park in Melbourne. The start of a new Formula One season is always a magical moment after eight months of working flat out to design and develop their cars. The teams put them on the track here in Melbourne, and this is where they find out where they are relative to the opposition and what kind of season they're likely to have. It's stiflingly, pitilessly hot here. You know the procedure when the five lights go off, the 2008 World Championship will be underway. And it's go in Australia! Cracking start, someone stalled at the back. Lewis Hamilton's got a good start. Kubica looks electric on the run down to the first corner. But Hamilton goes defensive and bucks him out. Kubica is right up his gearbox though. And Kovalainen, I think, and Massa. 
Massa were very close to each other. Where is Felipe Massa? Can't see him at the moment. There was contact further back as well. But Kovalainen, and there is Massa. Seems to have dropped some ground. Dropped a huge amount of ground. I think there was a Toro Rosso pointing in the wrong direction too in the first turn. Massa squabbling there with uh, a Red Bull. And, uh, no, that's Kimi Raikkonen. And Massa sorry, is nowhere to be seen. I saw him getting very close to Kovalainen into that turn one. And as we predicted, a tremendous difference in the quality of their start. Hamilton leads, Cubans the second, Koba Line and third, Rosberg fourth, Felipe Massa has yet to appear. He's not in the top 16. And the safety car, well, I told you about the safety car and the chances of it being deployed. It's already out on the first lap here. Lewis Hamilton leads it then from Cubans to Koba Line and Rosberg. Heidfeld is in fifth place, Trulli sixth. Barrichello is up to seventh in the Honda. Kimi Raikkonen's had an amazing start. From 15th on the grid, he is now 8th, and he could well be a danger man for Hamilton from there. Alonso 9th, Coulthard 10th, and Felipe Massa, Martin, is in 17th place. Now, PK up to 12th from the back of the grid. There's uh, Davidson, who uh, I believe was in contact with the Toro Rosso, possibly a Bordet. Weber also uh, with uh, left rear damage coasting back. We've got a Honda there of... Uh, Jensen Button, isn't it? Button's Honda, so three cars then have made contact. We've got Vettel and Fisichella out of the Grand Prix, so it's uh, Vettel's Toro Rosso we saw in the background. Coulthard had a par poor start, he's back down to 10. But this is very, very significant for Kimi Raikkonen. He will be so heavily fueled, James, won't he, in terms of with that grid position. The only thing it could have done is given him a sensible amount of fuel. He's in a great position there in eighth now, and Massa clearly with a damaged nose. I'd very much like to see a replay of what happened between Heike Kovalainen and Felipe Massa, because I fancy we'll be hearing quite a bit about it afterwards. In comes Massa then, with that damaged nose cone. Is, is there any other damage to the car? Let's have a look. Mechanics go to work. Putting soft tyres back on it, I notice. I have wondered if they would uh, swap to the harder rubber, but they obviously, they're running that soft tyre because they like it, obviously. New nose goes on. We're under safety car conditions, remember. Oh, and released, uh, released into the, the park, right in the path of Nakajima. That was uh, a bit dicey. Good job they weren't racing. But Nakajima obviously involved in an incident as well. We've got a car being carried off. That's uh, Giancarlo Fisichella's Force India car. Let's have another look. Now, Hamilton got away well. Kubica came across to cover him. Hamilton responded to that. Most cars getting away reasonably well. And there it is. It's Kovalainen on the outside. And uh, just the merest tag for the looks of it. And it's all going off behind. That uh, Force India almost went over in the gravel trap. And I think it's going to be just a slight tag with his left front uh, wing on the... No, it's... In fact, I think he just dropped... He either got a push from behind or he just plain dropped it. He and looked there... like he wanted to avoid Kovalainen, though, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Let's take another angle. So he never actually touched Kovalainen at all. The damage was done against the barrier. He dropped it by himself. That's the traction control. There is the flying force India that oh so nearly goes over with Fisichella on board. Behind it all goes off. Somehow Vettel got caught up in that. And uh, Kimi Raikkonen way down the outside of turn three. I tried that once and ended up upside down about ten times. But look at that, he's going past, he's got pin Coulthard up against the curb and turn four, gets the high ground for the turn into five. And that's the sort of progress that Kimi Raikkonen was making. And the unluckiest man in Formula One, without any doubt, Mark Webber, parked in the pits out of his home Grand Prix. So four drivers then showing is retired at the moment. Webber, but five, sorry. Webber, Button, Davidson, Vettel, and Fisichella. We're so off again. Safety car into the pit lane and restart here in Melbourne, led by Lewis Hamilton. Robert Kubica is second. Kovalainen's third. Fourth is Rosberg. Terrific for him. What a great platform for him to do something here this afternoon. And we believe he is carrying a very significant fuel load as well. So if he can keep Heitfeld behind him for a while, he'll be doing well. That BMWs look very racy. That, uh, who's behind them? Is Raikkonen up to seventh now? Barrichello up to sixth in the Honda. So the form book turned on its head really yesterday in qualifying and here in the race as well. A very different picture from the one imagined by many people before the start of this season. Here comes Massa, unable to refuel the previous time. And it did change his nose cone and on he goes again. Yes, you're not allowed to refuel. You're allowed to uh, repair accident damage. You're not allowed to refuel under safety car conditions. And Luis has found Giancarlo Fisichella. Giancarlo, that looked like pretty hairy stuff. 
Yeah, I don't know who came across my right hand side like a kamikaze and uh, he pushed me out. That's all. Was this an incident that would have happened with all of the dry grades that you had previously or do you think it's down to not having them this season? No, I don't think so. It's just uh, because somebody was too aggressive at the first corner, you know. Thanks, Giancarlo. But I think the, the difference is, and is how it always used to be, and they're going to have to recalibrate. But you've got cars moving back through the pack because they didn't get away well. Others who got away beautifully moving forward through the pack, and they meet in the middle like that. They'll just have to adjust their tactics. 23-year-old Lewis Hamilton from Stevenage leading the Grand Prix then. He led, of course, here in Australia briefly last year after a stellar start, eventually finished in third place. Would love to start the 2008 championship with a win. And this is uh, a look at uh, Anthony Davidson and what happened to him in the Super Aguri. His teammate Takuma Sato there just behind him, and that's all it took to break the front-left suspension of Anthony Davidson's car. And uh, there's where Mark Webber is at the moment, and that's how his uh, left rear got damaged. Just the nearest touch. Normally, the suspension is beefy enough to cope with, not with that, going into the wall, but with the sort of tag that Mark Webber had there, where they had a problem early on. They're clearly still working on the Red Bull. We expect uh, Hamilton to stop twice this afternoon, the first time around about lap 20 or 21. So that's your top eight at the moment. Hamilton, Kubica, Kovalainen, Rosberg, Heidfeld, Trulli, Barrichello and Raikkonen in the early stages here. And we're riding on board with the reigning world champion, Kimi Raikkonen in the Ferrari. Started 15th, took advantage of the chaos at the start to jump up into eighth place, but he's not made a lot of progress since then. And he is now 20 seconds behind race leader Lewis Hamilton, who's just turned the fastest lap of the race in a 128-1. That's 1.3 seconds faster than Kubica, and the performance of Kubica's tyres would appear to be going off a bit on the BMW. Yeah, Kovalainen in the second, McLaren closing in on Kubica's BMW now. And Lewis Hamilton in a class of one up the front. He's uh, a full second quicker than just about anybody else out there. And uh, Rosberg appears, no, he's, he uh, dropped off the computer momentarily, did Nico Rosberg. But uh, he looked like he was falling down the pack, but he's not. He's still in fourth place. So it's Hamilton, Kubica, Kovalainen, Rosberg, Heidfeld, truly in sixth, Barrichello seven, and Raikkonen just four tenths behind, needing urgently to clear that Honda. Lap 16 of the Australian Grand Prix, the opening round of the 2008 Formula One World Championship, and Lewis Hamilton from pole position is leading this race by over 11 seconds and tru truly he is in a class of his own. Robert Kubica, the BMW driver, is in second place. Looks like he's getting ready for his first pit stop of the day. This is lap 16. Heike Kovalainen has been biding his time in third place in the second of the McLarens. He's uh, just over a second behind Kubica at the moment with Rosberg, Nico Rosberg in the Williams, having a fantastic drive in fourth place. And his team boss, Sir Frank Williams, I know is watching this one from home in Oxfordshire and I bet he's on the edge of his seat really just clinging on hoping that Rosberg can get a, a good strong finish here possibly even a podium uh, the way he's driving at the moment into the pit lane comes Robert Kubica just 80 kilometers per hour 50 miles per hour still looks pretty quick as he heads into a garage made up of his own men fuel rig two jacks it's another set of tires ready to go on they'll clean out the radiator ducts but as soon as the refueling is finished, the lollipop will go up, and wow, that was absolutely on the button to get away. And can he get ahead then of, no, he can't, of Barrichello and Raikkonen? And that is going to uh, cause him a problem. With the pace that we're expecting Kubica to have out there now on a fresh set of tyres. And look at this, Raikkonen very close now. Barrichello defending on the inside. Raikkonen surely can't go around the outside. Can he double back inside? And, uh, oh, that's going to end up with a broken front wing if you try that one. He thought better of it. And again, begins to slip back. Good driving from both drivers, but it didn't result in uh, anything close to an overtake. We understand this pit stop is for Lewis. Indeed it is. He hits the line and brings the car down to exactly 50 miles per hour.
couple of laps earlier than we expected, Ted Kravitz. And here he goes. Yeah, but it is still going to be a two-stop if he mirrors the stop of Robert Kubica, which took that 8.6 seconds, which it looks like he is. The McLaren boys, very steady. That's just above nine seconds. So uh, a standard two-stop there, and he's gone out back again on the hard tyres. That's working for McLaren well. Ted, could you see whether they were new tyres or ones that had been scrubbed? They were brand new tyres, James, brand Thanks new tyres. Just comes out, just misses the BMW of Nick Heidfeld, in, who was in fourth place and now is up into third, so Hamilton slots back in fourth. Well, we have to assume that he had to come in the pits for fuel because uh, otherwise I think they would have left him out a couple more laps so he could have cleared those two cars. He'll have to go through a graining phase again. They look remarkably as if they've been scrubbed to me, but anyway, there'll be uh, effectively a brand new set of tyres and uh, he's got to get up and running. He had a, a lead of the thick end of 15 seconds. And is that uh, Kimi is past Rubens Barrichello. It would have been down into turn three. It's Kimi in turn five. Now he's got to get on with it because his afternoon started brilliantly. He made up so many places off the line, seven places off the line. And now he's been neutralized uh, through the next 18 laps. He can now recover a lot of that space. He's 15 seconds behind Lewis Hamilton, who's already made his first stop, and this is how he did it. He's a long way behind at the moment and uh, picked up a, a great slipstream. And, oh, and uh, Rubens gave him just enough room, but didn't go as defensive, did he? It's almost as if Rubens was thinking, I, I need to let this guy by now. It's costing me time as well. And he'll get past me eventually. I may as well let him go. That, that, that's got that sort of hallmark on it as far as I'm concerned. There's another look of it. Down the inside goes the reigning world champion on a recovery drive from 15th place on the grid. As Jano truly pits for Toyota. Was in sixth place. Something going on inside the car there. Steering wheel has changed. Oh, he's not happy. Poor old Jano. He was driving very well in the top six for Toyota. And he's had to pop out of the car. Meanwhile, here's Massa and Sato, take two. And he gets him through turn 14. And a clean pass for Massa, puts him up into 12th place. Just to let you know what's happening outside of the uh, top eight, but David Coulthard in eighth place. Alonso, the two-time world champion on his return drive to Renault, is in ninth. Timo Glock is 10th, Massa 11th, Sato 12th, Nakajima 13th, Yano Trulli in the pits. That means that Nelson Piquet in the Renault is 14th, and Sebastian Bourdais on his debut is 15th. Big moment then in the race. Here comes race leader Heike Kovalainen for his first ever McLaren pit stop. And also worth paying attention to is the fact that uh, Raikkonen is now in third place. Scrub tyres going on to Kovalainen's car. I do wonder whether Hamilton's got scrubbed on as well. And uh, meanwhile, Hamilton is losing time at the moment. He's losing half a second a lap to Raikkonen. I said a few laps ago it was 15 seconds the gap after Raikkonen got past uh, Barrichello. It's now down to 11 seconds between Hamilton and Raikkonen. 36 laps to go here at Albert Park. A lot of racing still to happen. Two Finns line astern then now, having pitted for the first time, is, is uh, Kovalainen, and, and immediately behind him is Kimi Raikkonen, who's absolutely flying immediately onto the leader's pace. And of course, we know he's going to be uh, fueled quite heavily, making those soft tyres work. That Ferrari has got the pace we were expecting pre-season. They've just had a miserable weekend. Gano Trulli was out of the race and Louise Goodman's found him. Yeah, he's now walked out to the back of the garage. Um, so let's find out what was the problem. Yano, we saw you kind of fiddling with the steering wheel. What, what was the issue? Basically, from the start of the race, the battery started eating up. It was really, really hot under my knee. And then uh, the time when I stopped, um, the car just stalled, the engine stalled, and there was no more uh, battery. On a positive note, though, this car is looking a lot stronger than, than last season for definite, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a shame that we lose uh, points like that. Oh, the car so was, is better than Massa last makes car. massive contact there with David Coulthard. A huge incident there into Turn 1 as the Ferrari driver tried to go past the Red Bull driver. Yeah, we'll have to see uh, from how, car, how far he came back. It, it looked to me as if Massa was uh, within striking distance of the overtake. Does he have left front suspension problems? Well, it's hanging on with plenty of G-force through Turn 5 there. It'll go under braking if there's a lot of damage. I think it's just general movement going on. It does look a bit wobbly. Certainly more than a bit of general movement going on with David Coulthard's car. A lot of uh, debris on the racetrack. And uh, second safety car of the afternoon deployed for David Coulthard's uh, 
accident and the debris on the track here and uh, i wonder if that's going to advantage anybody raikkonen can make a pit stop under safety car conditions here that could be quite interesting let's take another look at it yeah i think that uh, felipe will feel that he had the high ground there that he had the right to uh, stay on the inside of the corner dc quite clearly didn't know he was there your peripheral vision in these cars is very poor and uh, clearly hadn't spotted that Massa was coming up the inside of him at quite the rate that he was. But I, I don't believe Massa uh, was wrong in holding his ground there. This puts Raikkonen right back into the race. He'll be able to pit under the safety car. It could be a major turning point for the Grand Prix. He's, can't, he's got to wait until the pit lane is open, of course, which it isn't, which is why that little moment of confusion there for Raikkonen, thinking he could go in and being told in no under certain terms that he can't until that uh, race control says the pit lane is open. We're under safety car conditions then here. Lewis Hamilton leads, Kovalainen in second and Raikkonen in third. The restart then on lap 30 here and in fact that's exactly what Kovalainen is doing. Raikkonen comes down on the attack. He has a much lighter car than Kovalainen. He tries to go around the outside and uh, he's been trying to pass him for a few laps before the safety of the car was deployed. He saw the restart as an opportunity, but so far, Kovalainen has denied him. The green flag's waving down the inside. Oh, he's Joe's going to go wide. Overcooked it. The world champion is in the gravel trap. What is going on for Ferrari today? That's another disaster for them. And Raikkonen looked like he was about 50 metres too late on the race. Kovalainen suddenly opened the door for him. Raikkonen took it, but he was just too hot as he went in there. And uh, luckily, no particular damage, but it's put Raikkonen once again at the back of the pack. There's now absolutely no reason for him not to refuel. Look, he caught uh, Kovalainen out, but he was just way, way too fast. So lucky not to just rumble across that gravel and take the nose off against the safety barrier. Here we go. Oh, yeah, way too deep. Way, way too deep. That was never going to stop in a month of Sundays. Yeah, well, they don't have the engine braking facility as well. That's another drive raid that's been taken off them. Right, he didn't need an he, anchor he to need, stop that. He would have needed a sail to go out, as you say, to slow down. Meanwhile, Massa in the other Ferrari compounding uh, that team's misery. He's pulling off to the side of the racetrack. Maybe he doesn't like the feel of that left front suspension after he whacked David Coulthard. Well, in comes Raikkonen. They're recovering that car under double wave yellows, which means slow down, even be prepared to stop. There are men on the racetrack. And then we saw a, um, a little uh, tow truck going on as well. Beautiful overhead shot of the Ferrari. What are they waiting for? Well, that's a lot of fuel going in there. Then clearly to the end of the Grand Prix. Now Raikkonen's got to do it all over again. What he could do with right now is the safety car to have to come out to clear that uh, his sister car away, to clear Massa's car away, but they're towing it under double waved yellows. Whoa. Alonso wide in turn 12 as well. There's a little bit of AstroTurf in there, which uh, of course we saw Kvitsa on in qualifying. So as predicted, the uh, getting rid of traction control and driver aids by uh, putting a common electronic control unit in all the cars. Basically, if they've all got the same electronic control unit, then there's absolutely no way they can cheat and get traction control through the back door. And it's taken a long time for the FIA and its president, Max Mosley, to uh, drive that one through. But we've now got it in Formula One, and uh, you can see for yourself the outcome. Drivers are making mistakes. The cars are much more difficult to control. And, uh, well, it's certainly pretty spectacular to watch. Back on board with Raikkonen. This continuing scrap with Glock over 10. Well, he's a little bit closer now. If he can just hook that apex up there, he's closer than he was. But an attack on the way into this last corner, despite the turn in there. And Glock's got better traction off that corner than the Ferrari. So, uh, down into turn one. Can he have a go? Glock's keeping an eye on him, but nowhere near close enough. Kimi needs good exit here to have a chance down into his least favourite turn three. He is closer. Surely this time he will just pounce down the inside. He won't. He's going to lose it. Stick a wheel on the grass. What's he doing out there? The anti-stall kicks in. He selects first gear and off he goes. That's two errors then today. Two critical errors from the current world champion. Well, there you go. Two mistakes into the pits comes Lewis Hamilton, the race leader for his second scheduled fuel and tyre stop. 16 laps to go then. He's going to switch onto the softer of the two Bridgestone compounds, the least favoured one. Let's see uh, what kind of performance he gets out of him. But the real danger man, as far as he was concerned, was uh, 
Of course, was Raikkonen earlier on. He was uh, taken out of the situation. He's now just taken him out of the situation, self out of the situation even further. Heidfeld uh, is catching Kovalainen there up front. Kovalainen leading again. There is Barrichello, who comes, uh, Hamilton comes out just behind him. So he rejoins in fourth place then, Lewis Hamilton, with uh, Heidfeld and Kovalainen, and Barrichello still to pit. Yeah. And Lewis hasn't got this in the bag yet. If he goes and gets any kind of graining phase here, because uh, Heidfeld and Kovalainen were keeping him very honest just before that pit stop, and the gap was yo-yoing around, but still gradually coming down. And that's uh, Raikkonen in front of a Glock, then, surely. Uh, no, he's just, he's, he's raging, I think, trying to catch him up again. No, he's sorry, yeah, of he so much time for this incident here. Just look... Uh, it just, I think he's, he took his eye off the ball, and uh, I don't know why Glock opened the door for him, and I, th I think because Kimi had that disaster up against uh, Kovalainen, look, he could have, he just, he's just gone, gone wide, I think his eye was on the apex, stuck the left rear on the grass, and it swapped ends. Kovalainen leading for the second time in this Grand Prix, and Nick Heidfeld in the BMW comes in from second place. BMW looking for their third podium as a constructor in Formula One. They had a couple last year. Been a good performance from Heidfeld. Nobody coming down the pit lane this time, and away he goes. Oh, oh, oh. enormous shot for Timo Glock in the Toyota. That's certain to bring out the safety car again. There is debris all over the track, and Timo Glock on his first run for Toyota has gone off in the most massive way. Safety car deployed, and uh, Glock looking as if he took a bit of a whack there but uh, probably also on the radio but no i think he's i suspect it's the exit of turn 12 isn't it the fast chicane where he's dropped the toyota probably 140 150 miles an hour safety car deployed nobody can pit at this time until the message comes up on everybody's computer board and uh, they'll pick up whoever they can first and then release the other cars until they unlap themselves this to well, an extent, plays back into Raikkonen's hands. Well, it does, but I tell you what, there'll be a few people, this is absolutely prime second stop kind of window. There'll be a few people out there who might be getting a bit marginal on fuel and we'll hope that uh, the pit lane opens before too long. Of course, we have had a few laps under the safety car in this Grand Prix in which they can save some fuel, but looks to me as though Timo Glock certainly winded. There you go, exactly as you predicted, off at turn 12, almost catches some air, does catch some air, and, uh, well, that, he certainly felt that. Yeah, so he hasn't really connected with the wall uh, in any major way. It was the uh, landing. You've got to remember, the drivers sit on the floor of the cars. There's absolutely no suspension under their backside or cushioning at all. And uh, that service road launched the car. It really shouldn't be able to do that. And uh, it was, you know what that tends to do is compress your spine, your lower back, or, or damage uh, just on the, on, on the back of your neck. So uh, Glock walking away, but he will be winded. Great to see then, Timo Glock, the reigning jail. Oh, no! A disaster in the pit stops for Honda, and Barrichello pulls down the refueling man. Almost took the rig with him. We've seen some big problems in the past when that happens. A, a mix-up then in the Honda pits, and there's an injury. I uh, hope it's not too severe to one of the mechanics there. But They're all there looking after each other. He's not even allowed in the pits at the moment to refuel, unless he's allowed to come in and change damage, but... They, they shouldn't be in the pits. Absolutely right, yep. There was no sign on the, our monitors from race control. Let's take a look at what happened again. Yep, the lollipop was lifted. The fuel hose was still connected. So, uh, big mistake there by the man holding the lollipop at the front. Barrichello did as instructed. And, uh, well, the rest you saw for yourselves. Ted Kravitz has some news. James, it was the lesser of two evils for Rubens Barrichello and his engineer, Jock Clear. Have him run out of fuel on the track because that's what would have happened. Or bring him in, give him the fuel, and then let him serve the penalty. At least that way, he's still in the race. And you never know, with this kind of count, he might actually end up getting some points. But uh, a big sigh of relief at McLaren and at Renault because uh, they could have had the same fate. But Kovalainen, who's in right now, and Fernando Alonso have managed to save enough fuel and make it to the pit lane open. Yeah, but it's a disaster for them because it's put them at the back of the crocodile behind the safety car. Hamilton just got in and out in time. Kovalainen couldn't pit. The pit lane wasn't available to him, nor could Alonso. So that has hurt Kovalainen badly, surely. 
Yeah, a little bit slow away for uh, Fernando Alonso. And this is, uh, yeah, really unfortunate, as you say, for Heike Kovalainen, was running a very solid second place here. But now uh, he's uh, dropped to the back of the crocodile behind uh, the safety car. And uh, he rejoins in ninth place. That puts Raikkonen up into a, a single points paying position, eighth. So the order then, as we get ready for the restart here, after this, this is the third safety car we've had at Albert Park. This one for a, a major accident involving Timo Glock. I'm delighted to say that he walked away from it, but his car was launched in the incident. Hamilton, Heidfeld, Barrichello, but of course we expect Barrichello to get a penalty. That could give Rosberg the chance of a podium here this afternoon in the Williams, and he'll thoroughly deserve it because uh, he was very strong in the opening part of this Grand Prix. For a safety car coming in this lap, Bordet in his debut for Toro Rosso is showing his fifth. Kubitz at sixth for BMW. Seventh and on for his first World Championship points for Williams is Kazuki Nakajima with Raikkonen in eighth place. And uh, it's looking like a very good day indeed at the moment for Williams with 11 laps to go. Yeah, Kovalainen is out behind Raikkonen, of course, and Alonso. So Kovalainen and Alonso, as I said, at the back of the crocodile now, behind the safety car with an awful lot of... They just lost track position because they couldn't pit. Hamilton then, the safety car's in this lap, so Hamilton becomes the de facto safety car and to that extent with Heidfeld just behind him. Barrichello, we know, will get a penalty. And, uh, well, bad news for Heike Kovalainen. But I, I can hear the cries now of, look, three safety cars, lots of uh, lots of incidents. The driver's going to say, because you've taken away our traction control, but... I have to say, I'm not sure Glock shunt was because of traction control. He, he dropped it uh, on the exit of 12 there. May have been, but Coulthard's incident clearly was uh, was normal a normal racing incident. A restart then for the third time. The 10-second stop and go penalty for Barrichello, as we predicted. Hamilton leads them away. Heidfeld is in second place. Barrichello crosses the line third, but he'll have to come in and serve that penalty shortly. And that means that Nico Rosberg is on target for a podium here in the Williams. The 22-year-old and his third season in Formula One into the pit lane come uh, Kubica and Nakajima to pit after the safety car. Well, they had some sort of contact there. Nakajima, oh no! He was on for some points, but you look, his front wings disappeared. Yeah, they've been in, uh, they were coming so slowly down the pit lane. There's clearly uh, been a reasonably, how did they do both front ends? I this mean, is they're the... in different incidents, but they, yeah, it looks as if they've had a little uh, shuffle into a corner, and Kubica appears he may have some other problems too. Yeah, poor old Robert Kubica started from a career best second on the grid, but it's all over for him with 10 laps to go. This is uh, uh, Raikkonen and... Uh, Alonso on Kovalainen. Alonso goes past Kovalainen for seventh place, but Raikkonen was holding sixth, so he's lost a couple of places there during the course of that lap. While we were looking at the uh, incident in the pit lane, Raikkonen has gone from sixth to eighth. Into the pits comes Rubens Barrichello. That will put Raikkonen up another place. Ron Meadows, the sporting director of Honda, on the stopwatch there, telling Alistair Gibson to let him go. And, well, there's been some, there's been a lot of going on here between these yeah, two. I'd like to Very see what experienced there. drivers here. Alonso and Raikkonen, and Kovalainen as well. Here's hopefully a look at it. Yeah, OK, so Kovalainen is getting, oh, getting held up. Is he going to go run wide down into 13? So he took a place, and uh, that's where Alonso got past him. So they were passing, or trying to pass Bourdais, and uh, there's the other incident then. There's the front wing of Nakajima going off. And it appeared to be almost unrelated to uh, Kubica, doesn't it? Let's have another look at this. Kovalainen. Oh, uh, it's, uh, now, Nakajima they were just very getting much related. the back of Kubica exactly at the restart. Bode is fourth now for Toro Rosso with Alonso, Kovalainen and Raikkonen. Two of those three are world champions chasing him down in his first ever Grand Prix.
kept his head, hasn't he? Hasn't had particularly stunning pace, but Bourdais is still there, helped by the safety car. But safety car racing in America has been his business, hasn't it? Yeah, multiple champion over in America. He uh, may be a rookie in Formula One, but he is 29 years old, Sebastian Bourdais. He's the oldest rookie in Formula One for about 15 years. And uh, it's absolutely brilliant the way he's kept his head here at Albert Park. And he's really going to need his wits about him now because he's got a two-time world champion and another world champion behind him. And uh, they mean business. They've all lost the chance of big points here this afternoon. Alonso coming through from 11th on the grid is up into fifth. Raikkonen trying to make the best of a very bad day yesterday in qualifying. 15th on the grid. He's up into seventh at the moment. Barrichello has uh, taken advantage of the incident involving Nakajima and Kubica. So he's back into eighth place. And he's the final runner, in fact. So we've only got uh, eight runners at the moment in this Grand Prix with eight laps to go. That's a limping, prancing horse, without doubt. Now, what are you going to do if you're Ferrari at this moment? If he, if he retires from the race, he gets a free engine and gearbox change. He will not take any grid penalties. But he's currently going to score two World Championship points. We'll keep an eye on uh, well, Barrichello's five seconds a lap faster and only 18 seconds behind. So Barrichello will nail him. You've got to have a legitimate reason for retiring, though, Martin, haven't you? As you remember here a few years ago, Honda brought yeah. both cars in at the end of the uh, first race of the season just to retire them because they weren't going to get any points anyway. Yeah. So you've actually got to have a problem before you can... Uh, yeah. Mind you, you can always stick it in the wall, can't you, I suppose? Well, I have to say, that sounds a sufficient problem to me. I mean, there are, are 5,000 individual parts in those engines, and clearly one of them is not happy right now. Back on board with Heike Kovalainen in sixth place on his first outing with the McLaren team. He had a nightmare here last year on his uh, Formula One debut with Renault. Off the road a couple of times en route to 10th place. This hasn't been plain sailing by any means for him. That was all a bit scrappy through there for Heike. Turned in too early to four and ran very wide. Kimi Raikkonen finally rolls in. And, well, Melbourne is a town full of... Uh, Italian immigrants, 8,000 Italians living here in Melbourne, most of them around uh, the Ligon Street area. Many of them turn out every year, and boy, have they had some big days here with Michael Schumacher, Eddie Irvine winning races, and of course, last year, Kimi Raikkonen as well. But this year, nothing to smile about at all for the Italians in the crowd. It's been a disastrous uh, opening to the 2008 championship for Ferrari, with both cars failing to score points, while their main rival, Lewis Hamilton, is three laps away from 10 laps in victory. Well, I bet he wish he could have just... Have, uh, there's, the, there's the red light, so uh, that's a replay from earlier on. I suspect that is because the safety car and the tail were coming into the pit straight, so Honda having a miserable time. And there's... Oh, Bourdais! Bourdais slows! Poor old Sebastian Bourdais, just three laps away from five World Championship points on his debut. The Toro Rosso has let him down. And, uh, well, he must be absolutely gutted because he's driven his socks off today. And that means Alonso is up into fourth and Kovalainen is up to fifth. And will he have a go at the former world champion? There is Bordet. A few well-chosen French swear words, no doubt, being said inside that helmet. What's going on here? Kovalainen taking uh, the long way round. Will he get a better drive out of the corner? And you're, you're just about allowed to do that, Mr. Alonso, but it didn't do any good because Kovalainen makes it stick. How satisfying will that be? Fantastic pass by the man who took the seat at McLaren of Fernando Alonso in this pretty much a straight swap between them. Oh, Alonso comes back at him, but Kovalainen's got problems. He didn't get drive out of the corner, and now Alonso's got the satisfaction. He takes the place back again. It looked like maybe you can't miss a gear with these um, no, modern can't. systems, but what happened? I don't know. These, these gearboxes change gear 50 times faster than you can blink your eye, and it looks like he suddenly had a box full of neutrals there. That was a, a bit of a cruel irony, wasn't it? Meanwhile, Lewis Hamilton coming through. 
And a checkered flag. And uh, well, Lewis Hamilton's driven absolutely beautifully. He takes his fifth career victory, the first for McLaren here since 2003. None of his main rivals have scored a point here this afternoon. And what a satisfying start to the season for Lewis Hamilton. Second is Nick Heidfeld. Third is Nico Rosberg. There is Nakajima who will pick up a point for seventh. Alonso picks up fourth ahead of Heike Kovalainen who can't believe his bad luck after all that hard work getting in front of Alonso only to lose it again. But it's the best possible start to the season for Lewis Hamilton. Pole position, lights to flag victory. Boltless, under pressure, didn't quite make fast as lap. That went to Kovalainen in the system McLaren. But uh, really supreme, handled the safety cars absolutely no problem at all in all of the tricky conditions. Well, he led the World Championship for most of last season and he's already on top in 2008. Okay, Lewis, that was, uh, that's pretty good. Normal service has been resumed. Another 17 races like that. And uh, be sweet. Well done. Great job. It's been a spectacular day here at Albert Park, Melbourne. Most of the main rivals failed to pick up any major points. For Lewis Hamilton, it was a perfect 10. He's going to be very hard to beat in 2008. I think with, without traction control and without the, the driver aids that we, we don't have this year, it makes it a lot more demanding for the driver, physically, mentally. And so that's probably why you see that there's only seven cars finished. As a start for the season, it couldn't be better because our winter testing was, was difficult, especially the first test. We didn't expect to be that strong on our first race, but we we think that there's a lot more potential in the car, so our target remains the same to win a race this year. To be honest, I went into the race uh, with not wanting to take too many risks because it's the first race of the season and there's no point to, to exaggerate on anything and, and that's worked well for me today. It was very, very strange race with the safety cars and uh, with all the accidents that we had, so you know, at the end, uh, I think that uh, you know, I took a little bit of advantage of everything, and I finished fourth. That uh, maybe ten laps to the end, uh, I was not expecting. At least it's only the first race, and uh, the car itself was good when good when we were able to run our own. So I think so we have a good car, but uh, not the ideal race here. What about where this puts you and the team going into Malaysia just in uh, seven days' time? Well, it puts us in, in a great position. This is where we wanted to be. Unfortunately, Heike, I think, got, in, got caught with the, the, the safety car and still got points. Um, so I think he's still done a great job this weekend. But he will continue to push me. Um, but obviously, we're going into Malaysia um, planning on winning that. The winning start to the season that Lewis had been hoping for ever since the frustrations of Brazil four months ago. His expected main title challenges have struggled. Heidfeld and Rosberg complete the podium. Alonso settles for fourth. Kovalainen deserved better than fifth. Points for Nakajima and Bordet. And Rubens Barrichello was excluded for exiting the pit lane under a red light. So Raikkonen was able to deliver a single point on a bad day for Ferrari. So Lewis is back on top of the World Championship battle, but most significantly for McLaren, they're allowed this season to keep the points they score in a Constructors' Championship that they were excluded from last year. And Mark Blundell, all in all, a very good weekend indeed for McLaren. A fantastic weekend for McLaren, fantastic day for Lewis Hamilton, outstanding drive. Didn't put a foot wrong from start to finish, a great drive with great maturity. He seemed in control uh, throughout. The only pressure he seemed to come under was at the start from Robert Kubica, who was quite forceful from uh, alongside him. Yeah, he was indeed, but I think uh, Lewis Hamilton again just takes his normal defensive line, leads into turn one, and just uh, lets everybody else uh, create the melee behind. And it's exactly what it was there at the back of the grid. A couple of the cars climbing over each other. Some of the guys getting put out very early on. This here is a classic mistake by Felipe Massa. Just gets a little bit too tight into turn one, steps into the throttle, hasn't got the traction control to save him anymore. There's clear air between those two cars, they don't touch, it just makes a simple driving error. 
And you can see the other errors at the back of the pack there, and uh, a couple of the guys already out by turn one. And that with Massa was really where the, stay, the day started to go really wrong for Ferrari. It got worse when Massa came together with David Coulthard. Uh, it did indeed, but I think this is really a, a classic racing incident. Just going into turn one there, I think Felipe Massa tried to slip down the inside. To be fair to David Coulthard, I don't think they've got great visibility with these modern day Grand Prix cars. He didn't really see him. I think if DC watched this in reflection, he maybe think he could have given a little bit more room to Massa. Massa was committed to the move and there was nothing they could do other than collide with each other. Unfortunate. Raikkonen was making a bit of a charge uh, from the back. He gave us an indication of the sort of pace we might see during the course of the season from the Ferrari, but he was making mistakes. Uh, he made a terrible mistake here. He just uh, got the car in front of him and just checked up, and he went way in too deep, just much too much uh, speed. Luckily, he didn't get the wall, actually, and uh, create a bigger problem for himself. Again, another result of uh, driver error here. He just put the left rear onto the grass. Just turned himself around there. No traction control again, no engine braking. I think just catching out the guys, whether they were inexperienced or experienced world champs. So what sort of confidence and what sort of advantage will, will Lewis and McLaren now take on to next weekend in Malaysia? I think they take a huge amount of confidence into the next race. They know their car's reliable, a lot of the uh, contenders aren't, and they go in with already a race under their belt, and it's a great way to start the championship. 17 more Grand Prix for Lewis, and at this moment I think he's got 17 great opportunities. Wonderful start to the season then for Lewis Hamilton, victory here in Australia. Just before in July, our next stop is Kuala Lumpur next weekend, and we'll have live coverage of qualifying for the Malaysian Grand Prix at 5.15 on Saturday morning, replayed later in the day, and live race coverage from 6.15 on Sunday morning, once again, replayed later on. And already some famous names out on the grid have some catching up to do, because Lewis Hamilton here in Melbourne has been a very impressive winner of the Australian Grand Prix.